everyone, it's Julia, and thank you so much for joining me today. I have a sewing project today that's very near and dear to my heart. But first of all, I wanted to, to thank everybody who, who wished me well for my, on my craft show this last weekend and just give you an update. The forecast was awful, but the weather turned out great. It, the, the rain held off and it was, it was a great weekend. A lot of people out and it was, it was just, it's always so fun. And I hope those of you that are out there who haven't subscribed, please do and ring that little bell. This is a wonderful sewing community and so many people share and give each other ideas and it has just been a real blessing. So I, I hope you, you jump aboard. For this week's project, I'm going to show you how I make my quiet dolls. This is something that I made 25, 30 years ago for my own children when they were little. They are young adults now. And I also sold them at craft shows. And just to give you an idea of what one is, it comes in this little case. And you open the case up and inside is a doll made from felt. And on this side is six little outfits. Just a variety of little dresses, a wonderful way to use up scraps of fabric. I usually include a couple pants outfits and also a little pair of pajamas. These are make wonderful gifts. They actually fit into a 5 by 7 greeting card. I just have a blank card here, but you can see how it fits inside. And with extra postage, you can mail it just like this. Another thing that I used to do when my, my kiddos were, were little, I would keep one in my purse. And then for those times when you just wanted them to be quiet, they had to wait for a, a meal at a restaurant or wait in the waiting room to see the, the doctor or church or, or any of those, number one of those, those things, you, you know what it's like. This is just a wonderful little thing that just kept them quiet and was always fun to bring out. The pattern for my quiet dolls will be available on my Etsy store. And what you will get is the actual pattern of the doll, pattern of the outfits. You will get the labels. And I run my labels using freezer paper onto a piece of muslin. And after they're out of the printer, I take the freezer paper off and then I back this with heat and bond light. And that, this is a fabric adhesive, an iron-on fabric adhesive, which will turn these labels into an applique. And I demonstrate that a little bit later. I've had many questions about running um, fabric through a printer. And I'm going to list a video down below to, for, more, for a wonderful, just she took so much time in doing and creating this video and I couldn't do anything like it. It's Lisa Capen's video and I'm going to, like I said, link that down below. She actually uses a laser printer to run her, her fabric using the freezer paper through her printer. I have an inkjet printer and that works wonderfully as well. I've also had questions about whether my inkjet feeds from the back or feeds from a, a tray in the front. I actually have two printers and one, for, one does one way, one does the other way and both of them, either of them work really well on, on printing the fabric or it'll feed just fine using the freezer paper um, as on the back. So again, hop on over to Lisa's channel. I'm going to link that down below if you have any questions on how to run fabric through your printer. Also included in the, the PDF are some samples of some of the clothing. Now this is something that you don't necessarily need to print off. You can just open it and kind of look, but it's interesting to see some of the different ways that you can decorate the little outfits. So that is also included with the pattern. In this video, I'm going to be, show, I'm going to be sharing how I make the little dolls, the clothing, and also how to construct the case. So let's get started. We're on to making the little doll now, and there's some supplies needed for this. First of all, the PDF is has the little doll on it, um, and this should measure, this little square down here should measure one inch. And so when you run this off on your computer, run it off as actual size. 
and I usually laminate mine and so if you have a laminator if you're going to be using this over and over again you can certainly do that. The felt that I use I pick up at my craft regular craft store actually Walmart usually carries it as well and there's three different skin tones that I use there's the light the medium and the dark they just turn out really cute. I do use some of the puffy paint for the eye and the lips and then also sometimes I'll put little little um like the light pink on the cheeks. The hook and hook and loop tape needed for the doll on the on the doll itself I use just the rough one or the or the, the hook part of the of the hook and hook and loop tape. Now the, the hair is optional but little either yarn or or floss embroidery thread works works well for that. Um, many for years when I when I sold these on craft shows, I did not put any hair on them at all. And so obviously an option. One thing I've noticed is when you have hair on them, like one person would want the 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 light skin with dark hair vice versa and they would be you know trying to find one and and it just didn't I just easier when you're selling these at a craft show not to put hair on at all and they you know it's just an option for you if you do put the hair on it's cute to have a little bow at the top and so some the, the real thin or skinny um, ribbon works well for that for the backing now there's a couple different ways to make these little dolls stiff and this this one is is made stiff using just white glue and water so it has almost a milk consistency and I brush it on and I'll show you that process and they get really wonderfully stiff or another another way you can certainly do it is using a uh, fusible interfacing on the back side and I like using this extra firm um, craft um, by heat and bond for the backing and again it would be just ironing on the back of of the felt before you cut it out it just works easier of course if you iron it on before you cut and so I'm going to be cutting some of these out I do I do cut with a pinking shear but that is again an optional thing you don't need to do that um, I just think it kind of adds a little like a little cute edge to it if you do choose to use the the white glue method to stiffen these, I do lay it out on wax paper and I'm, I'll show you how all that is done as well. We're on to making the clothes and this is just a place where you can use up your scraps and you just be creative and have a lot of fun with it. I like to use just a variety of different things. I have some quilting, 100% cotton quilting fabrics. I like using the flannel. The flannel works really well for the little pajamas. I like to include a pajama in each kit. Again, for each of the little pieces of clothing, there's a piece of the hook and loop fastener. And this side, this time we're going to use the felt side. And I do, I do glue that on just using the white glue. And of course, it's a lot of fun to decorate the little, the little pieces of clothing. And you can use scraps of ribbon, trims. I also like using the puffy paint to add just a little dot that makes it look like a button. Um, again, the lace for the little collar, ribbon. These have all been stiffened using the white glue that has been watered down. And I'm going to show you that method. They have a real crispness to them. Um, if they do get crimpled up after playing with with them, um, you can iron them back down flat. There's another method, of course, to do the stiffening is to just to add the fusible um, interfacing on the back of your fabric before you cut them out. So either way, this has got a little bit different feel to them, um, but both both would work just wonderfully. They're both, you know, this is a fussy project. You're doing a lot of cutting and you're doing just a lot of different things. Um, but it, again, what a wonderful gift and a very homespun, homemade look to them. And they're just, it's just a wonderful little thing. So I'm going to do some cutting here. I'm going to cut out one of my, a couple of my little things. I'm going to be making some of the the flannel pajamas and I use the one piece for that and I'm going to cut a couple dresses out too and then I'll show you how I do the uh, stiffening with the white glue. I lay down a piece of wax paper to protect my surface and I'm mixing up some the, the glue water mixture. I do about two parts glue one part water 
You can experiment with that a little. If you like it thicker or, or stiffer, you can put more glue in it. I like using the, a piece of denim for the little jeans. So that was denim that I was doing. And I'm just brushing on just a, a light layer. I do add the glue to the dolls as well. It looks splotchy here, but that does dry much clearer. The Wyatt dolls come in this adorable little case, and that the packaging is just part of it. They're easy to make, and I'm just going to share with you some of the supplies, and then just go I'll just go through um, how I actually create them. Each one has a label on it that says "My Quiet Doll." And in the pattern, you will receive a PDF of several different fonts. Um, so you can just choose whichever label that, that you like. It also has a piece of the clear vinyl in the inside, and this is a mid-weight. Most craft stores carry this, Walmart carries it, and so it's easily found. But also keep in mind that you can find this in your house. A lot of times packaging has a, a, this clear vinyl, especially like sheets or, or different bedding, I, I've noticed has this this same weight type um, plastic or, or vinyl. So keep that in mind. And you're also going to need a just a little strip of the hook and hook and loop tape. It's the three fourths of an inch that I use, and you're just going to need about less than a half an inch of it. So, but you and you will need both sides. For the actual dimension, I cut a piece of fabric. The outer fabric is six inches by nine inches. The inside lining is the same, the six inches by the nine inches. The little piece of vinyl is nine inches by three inches. And then I also use a piece of the heat and bond light. And this is the, the one in the purple package. And this is like an iron-on adhesive for fabric. And that's what's going to glue the two pieces together. And it gives it a bit of stability, too. And so it's just a nice, a nice weight. And it just holds up really well. So I'm going to share with you how I do this. Other things you're going to need is clips. It's really difficult to pin. It just pokes holes, basically, through vinyl. So the clips work really well for this. This is the Wonder Clips. And another gadget that I always use when I use any sort of vinyl is an even feed dog foot. So if your machine comes with one of these, break it out for this project. This is also called a walking foot. And what it does, it, it, it acts like a presser foot or a feed dog. It's both on the top and the bottom and it just really feeds that plastic through much easier. If you don't have one of these, you may have to use more clips. And so let's go, to, let's get started with how I put this all together. I'm flipping my cut and press over so I have the press side up. And I'm ironing on that um, heat and bond light, that fabric adhesive. And once it's ironed on, I just peel that backing away and it has like a, a sticky part to it that can be ironed on. And I'm ironing the outer fabric. So I'm sandwiching, sandwiching that heat and bond in between. I'm folding that in half and cutting out one of the labels. Now these labels I have put heat and bond on the back as well. So I'm peeling that off and putting that into place and then ironing that. I lay up that piece of vinyl across the bottom and just have the bottom even to my case. I'm cutting a little piece of that hook and loop tape. I put, put the hoop on the back side of my case. So this is the hook, the hook part of it right here. And I just lay that and center it over the top of that vinyl. So half of it's on the vinyl and half of it's on the lining fabric of my case. Just doing a little bit of trimming here. And laying the felt side of that, that hook and loop tape again. So half of it's on the vinyl and half of it's on, on the lining fabric and just clipping that into place. I'm at my sewing machine now and I have that walking foot on and I'm going to start sewing right on above that hook and loop tape. I'm going through the hook and loop tape and going back through it again. So there is a triple stitch on that hook and loop. That just really keeps it secure as you're opening and closing the case. I'm taking about a half inch seam allowance and just turning at the corners. And now I'm putting that hook and loop into place here and I'm going to be going over the top of it 
back stitching through it and then stitching through it again again with it so that it's a triple stitch through that hook and loop and then turning again at my corners and I'm all the way around I do like to trim it now and I trim all the edges again with my pinking shears just to finish it off the clothing is dry now and it may take several hours for this to dry especially the felt pieces again flipping over to my press side and I am going to be ironing these and I iron the top side is up and I'm just placing my iron and ironing them down so they're they get a little crinkled from the glue I've never had a problem with anything sticking to my iron when I do this they iron really flat and they really crisp up once they're ironed I am turning this two-piece outfit into a one piece just by putting a line of glue across the top of the denim jeans and then placing the, the blouse in place. And now it's on to adding the hook and loop. I'm, I use the felt side of the fastener for, for the little outfits and I cut straight down the middle of this and then just cut little pieces. Putting just a, a dab of the glue on the top of each one and then placing the hook and loop right in that glue. For the little dolls, I do the same, but I put the, the, um, the hook side of the fastener on the dolls. to putting the little face on I'm using just the black of my puff paint these are the scribbles for the little mouth again I just add just a little just a little bit and almost like a heart shape and then adding a little bit of pink for the for the cheeks just in a circular motion On to the hair, I do use a, a hot glue gun for this and just a dot of hot glue at the very top and a dot at each side. Four or five strands of the floss and I just stick it to each into each of those, those dots of hot glue. And adding a little bow at the top again with hot glue. And then I give each of them a little haircut just to, to give them to get the end straight. It's so much fun decorating these little outfits. I love using this delicate lace, and I'm just cutting that edge off of that so the little flowers are showing. I'll be gluing these little flowers onto the bottom of this of this little shirt and then cutting one of the flowers off which will go at the neckline. And there it is.
Here's another lace that has a scalloped edge, and I'm going to be cutting the scallops separate and using that as a, a Peter Pan looking neckline or collar on these little pajamas. This one I'm leaving really simple by just putting some of the puff paint or the scribble paint in each one of these little zigzag stripes on this little dress. Just to show you how, this, the, how, you, how you would do the heat and bond um, interfacing. And this is the craft, the little bit heavier interfacing. Just ironing that to the back of the piece of, of, of the little piece of fabric. Love this delicate little flower. Laying my little piece on there, my little pattern. And then you would just cut that out as one, one piece. This is probably a little bit less time consuming. It is a little, a little bit more costly to use all the interface, just depending upon how many you're going to be making. I'm just cutting a really fun little tatting type trim on this at the neckline. And then again with the ones with the backing you would add the velcro to the back of that. And here's how they all look. They're just such a fun little project. I love how the little doll fits on one side and the little outfits on the other. I hope you enjoyed this. I do have some of these finished ones listed in my Etsy store. So if you, want, if you don't want to take the time to make them, it will be in the Etsy store. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye for now.